standing for the national prayer. O God of creation, direct our noble cause, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true, great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice reign. You may be seated. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Your Excellency, former Head of State and Chairman of this occasion, General Yakubu Gawan, Excellency, former President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari and his lovely wife, Excellency, the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Excellency, Professor Yemi Shibadro. Excellency, the President of the Senate, the very distinguished Senator Godswill Akpadio. Excellency, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, distinguished Senator George Akumi. Excellencies, governors here present, members of the Federal Executive Council, presidential advisors, the chief of staff to the president, the former speaker, Right Honorable Femi Batabiamila, the APC national chairman here present, heads of our security and para, para security um, architecture, and we have the Inspector General of Police and the head of the FRSC. Former members of the National Assembly, former governors, our respected book reviewers, heads of government and extra ministerial departments, captains of industry, authors of the book, members of the diplomatic corps and members of the international organizations here present, members of the fourth estate of the realm, my colleagues in the media, distinguished invited participants, ladies and gentlemen. I warmly welcome you to the public presentation of Muhammadu Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, 2015 to 2023, and working with Buhari, reflections of a special advisor, media and publicity. Two books, one a collection of five volumes and one a single one. My name is Eugenia Abu, I'm a multimedia strategy expert, I'm a broadcaster and writer. Today, I'm not on this podium alone, Your Excellencies. I would be working with a former Minister of Aviation, distinguished Senator Hadi Serika, who would be moderating the book launch, and my brother, presidential spokesperson to the former president, Garba Shehu. It is a beautiful day to be alive. There were many who did not cross into 2024, and there are many who left early in the year. We are thankful that we can all be here to see this day, a day of legacy, a day of history, a day of knowledge. This day of our Lord, 16th January 2024. Happy New Year to you all. We're gathered to celebrate a man whose legacy is assured, a man whose job description has severally been head of state and then president, and now former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whose famous quote is as true today as it is yesterday as it will be tomorrow. And I take that quote. Change can only be delivered if we are united in purpose as individuals and as a nation, we must all remain committed to achieving the positive and enduring change. We're here to celebrate the man, Muhammadu Buhari. Permit me at this time to invite the chairman of the occasion, respected former head of state, General Yakubu Gawan, to deliver his welcome address. Your Excellency, sir.
Your Excellency, Mr. President, President Tenubu, Your Excellency, uh, President Buhari, and Mrs. Buhari, welcome. Nice to see you back. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly, eminent and distinguished invited guests, my co-chairman, General I.B. Haruna. May I recognize also the chief launcher, Al-Haji Mohammed Indimi. And may I also recognize uh, the uh, book reviewer, uh, Shola Oshinke. I don't know whether you're a chief or a mister or a professor, but whatever it is, append the appropriate uh, you know, to your name. Ladies and gentlemen, and I think the protocol that uh, was established by our uh, eminent compare, I think is the probably best one. So let me just add this one. Uh, the uh, old uh, protocols duly observed. So append the appropriate protocol to your name. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the unveiling and public presentation of Muhammadu Buhari, the Nigerian legacy, 2015 to 2023, and also the working with Buhari, reflections of a special advisor media and publicity, Mr. Adesino. Your Excellency, General Buhari, President, President Buhari, it was a great pleasure to chair a great event in your life uh, the, at the book launch of your biography at your presidential inauguration in 2015. I don't know whether you remember that. <laughs> Here again today, I am privileged to unveil and publicly present your book, The Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, in five volumes and an extra work by your loyal and dedicated special advisor, uh, media and publicity, Chief Femi Adeshino. To all of you distinguished audience and invitees, thank you for your honoring the invitation and making the occasion so memorable. My work is made easy by the production of the five volumes of a well-researched and authoritative work, um, the legacy topics by many renowned intellectuals and authorities on all the subject discussed and the various achievements made by President Buhari and his government uh, throughout uh, the eight years. We shall hear more authoritatively about it from the book reviewer, Mr. Shola Oshinke. Am I right? Very good. The list of the legacy topics uh, to be presented or unveiled today uh, journey uh, to the presidency up to the first inauguration in 2015. The management of the economy, 
and the third one is national security and human development and the fourth one is industry and infrastructure and the fifth book uh, topic is strategic leadership governance and development now I won't have to go through all this book as I've said uh, Chief uh, Oshunke will do the details so all these subjects were dutifully uh, monitored by Mr. President and every subject carefully scrutinized by the whole team, you know, his team. And the president is always uh, in charge. And these, of course, usually are done you know, at the Federal Executive Council meetings. Most of the economic side uh, during your time was largely looked after by uh, the uh, you know, Vice President, Professor Yemi Osibanjo GCON. And from personal observation and reports that uh, one receives, uh, there are uh, usually all this uh, work are uh, usually at, uh, they all achieve reasonable success all uh, the, you know, and, and in all cases but uh, there is no doubt about it you know Nigeria uh, is not bereft of critiques and strident criticisms are made on any topic or any subject that is done as though, and then of course giving the impression as though nothing yeah, is achieved. I hope you will be convinced by the presentation uh, that, would be made, that would be made that much was achieved and, uh, and you know, unacknowledged and commended. I believe that in certain areas there seem to be some lacuna uh, in success. For example, in certain areas of security and uh, in certain areas of economics and in certain areas of finances. Yes, uh, we have you know, some problems, but a lot was achieved all the same. However, above all, I salute your courage in your foray or journey into politics and also in, uh, in, the pres in, the, in governance and presidency. Can one say, uh, like a good Irishman, the saying, uh, as a good Irishman, uh, the third time, you are third time lucky before you got through uh, and survived uh, the, uh, the, the eight year period. And of course, especially during the second term uh, in the tense uh, hostile political contest uh, before your, your second term, the contest that ultimately brought you and President uh, Abela Good, uh, Abela Good Luck, uh, uh, Jonathan in an exemplary, reconciliatory position that augured well for the country as a good example for the future of politics in Nigeria. I think you may recall that he said uh, during the contest, I quote, my ambition is not worth the blood of any Nigerian. And, and he graciously conceded defeat even before the final results were announced. You, Mr. President Buhari, was visibly in touch and appreciative of, the, uh, of that statement or comment, which indeed lowered, uh, lowered the political temperature at the time. And of course, 
we were able to have a successful inauguration you know, after that. This is a good example of Niger uh, to all Nigerian uh, politicians and leaders uh, to emulate. <laughs> At the end, Mr. President, you are able to ensure a smooth transition and hand over to your successor, President Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And you did this for the good of Nigeria and Nigerians. There were so many, you know, comment at that time, you know, that, uh, well, things will not go, uh, will not go right. But it is really great to see you at the podium and handing over uh, to uh, your successor, uh, President Asiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And I can assure you, I was really you know, happy that you are able to successfully hand over uh, to another great leader that is going to give Nigeria. you know, a new direction as, you know, as well. Mr. President, uh, before I end, from the invitation that I was given, I saw that, uh, uh, you know, I have a co-chairman for this occasion, and that is uh, uh, General I.B. Haruna. I think he's an old colleague, I don't know whether you are you know, colleagues at uh, your training establishment, or, but at least I know that uh, he would like if I mean to, I uh, would like if I mean to ask him to, uh, to come to say uh, you know, a word or two uh, to you, uh, you know, your old relationship, and also to be able to say something about the, uh, uh, your, uh, you, you know, you, uh, additional, uh, your, your respected and loyal uh, media and publicity advisor. So if you would uh, uh, agree with that, you know, I hope, uh, you know, he can come, you know, and say a word or two uh, for this, your committed and loyal uh, servant. Your Excellencies, eminent and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of the proceeding and ensure that you get a set of this publication for your own uh, personal uh, education. And uh, also, uh, you, if you can buy some for whoever you may wish to or organization you may wish to uh, so that at least uh, they can, uh, you know, glean uh, the the great value uh, this uh, this book you know have uh, you know are presenting. So thank you very much, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Indeed, um, a man whose thoughts uh, go on with one Nigeria that became his name, a man who qualifies as a distinguished Nigerian and whose role mostly today is to be praying for Nigeria, Chairman, former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawon, Your Excellency, we thank you so very much. Another round of applause for him. 
May I, at this time, invite a leading statesman, General I.P. Haruna. I seek your indulgence that I stand on the established protocol ably stated by the Lady Master of Ceremony. May I start by also after standing on the protocol to acknowledge His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, and take this opportunity to congratulate him on his electoral success. Congratulations, Your Excellency. I had made an acquaintance with you when years back I was on the board of Mobile Oil. And we knew ourselves reasonably then. And you know, I was very close to Ms. His, may his so rest in peace, Chief Bayo Kuku, and others. Your Excellency, congratulations. I can't go by without recognizing also my Commander-in-Chief when I was serving in the Army and through our turbulent years, His Excellency, former Commander-in-Chief, General Yakubu Gawan. May I also recognize the former Commander-in-Chief, President Muhammadu Buhari, and to say this has been my opportunity to say thank you for your hospitality when I was in Ibadan, serving in the chambers of Chief Olisa Chukura, S.A. and may his soul rest in peace. I was a student there, and you harbored me in your guest house. We never saw, but I enjoyed all the hospitality. And in all these years, this is the closest I've gotten to you. And it's an opportunity for me to say thank you. You had given me your help in becoming a lawyer and uh, an old one now, having 43 years post call. Um, the, sorry, I'm told when you get to about 80 something, which we are now, you are a bit slower, shaky and your voice also trembles. I am following the queue from my very senior commander-in-chief. Um, I am honored by this nurse invitation to participate in the launching of an exceptionally interesting innovation by a public servant doing a post-mortem 
of the social character or characteristics and let's say giving us a private glimpse into Buhari's private humanity. As a retired member of the Nigerian army, I can say that I am familiar with, with certain characterizations by the journalists and media. Generally, and Buhari he gave, he gave us the impression is a stand and no nonsense person. Additional's book, which I've had the privilege to read, however, has brought out some revealing, contrasting personality of Buhari that is not well known or associated with him. Take, for example, that a combination of Buhari and Idiabo is just some atmosphere of dark clouds, of awaiting storm, thunder, floods, discipline, quietude, and general orderliness, a war against indiscipline. I think many Nigerians will associate Buhari with that habit that has now become Nigerian, queuing to board buses or aircraft or anywhere in public. He has continued waging the war against indiscipline. But Fermi discloses, as you will soon discover from the book, from the, from the reviewers, that President Buhari does laugh indeed. And he laughed hilariously when he was shown a cartoon that depicted that one should not in a democracy elect a nomadic Fulani president and expect the man to stay in one place, <laughs> more so when he had health challenges. He does smile, he does laugh, and he does take jokes. <laughs> Again, Femi's book, as I was privileged to have read it, had a narration also that illustrated that Buhari did prove that government is a continuum and listed Buhari's successes in completion of erstwhile abandoned and uncompleted projects. For example, petroleum industry bill that had become an act under his presidency. The second Niger Bridge Numerous water dams for agriculture, water supply, hydropower projects. These were littered all over the countryside, to list a few. Though much credit is not publicized as his successes in the spheres of the economic and social development. Deterring criminalities, terrorism, and insecurity. Buhari has, however, countered these evils with determination, steadfastness, and courage. 
Well done, Your Excellency. As for me, I appreciate what you have done. And at the same time, Buhari preserved the integrity of the Nigerian democratic state upon which we are still building. I congratulate Chief Femi Additional for the book and recommend it for posterity, the general public, politicians, academics, individuals, and historians. I leave much of what can be said about Buhari by the reviewers of the book. I have said a little, but the book reviewers will say a lot more about his attitudes and that of his detractors and vendors of spiritualism or witchcraft in Asorok. <laughs> the leadership and governance in a democracy is not easy dealing with human beings in a position of authority when you are not God. False will always be found, no matter how perfect your imperfections have been. I congratulate you for your services to this country as a leader and a military icon. I thank Femi and wish the launching of this book will go well in helping us see better what we are dealing with and what our president has to solve for now over time and for time ahead, which is not known to us, only Allah knows. But we should do our best with the opportunities we have. And may peace, brotherhood, and unity reign in our country in the glorification of God and the privileged leaders we have had, we are having. We wish our president luck. As for Buhari, we can never escape from the, for the, the, the contradictions of people about you. But I know you are stern, you are humble, you are courageous, and you have lived a good life, and you will continue to be trusted. God will be with you and your family for what lays ahead. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Your Excellency, the former President, Your Excellency, Head of State, we thank you so very much. Our co-chair, General Ibrahim Malgui Haruna, a retired officer of the Nigerian Army, was a federal commissioner for information and culture 
between 1975 and 1977. He was, he was also Chairman Executive Council of Ariwa Consultative Forum from 2009 to 2012. General Haruna would often not go just by his name. Everybody knew him as IBM Haruna. And that is how he has been known. A man who speaks only the truth that he knows. Many years ago, a journalist who wasn't very well researched put General Haruna in the studio and asked him a couple of unbecoming, unbecoming questions. questions. And General Haruna said to him, I'm not sure you know what you're talking about. I will tell you about it. Let's give a round of applause to our co-chair. Thank you very much, sir. I'd like to greet and salute and welcome the former First Lady, Her Excellency Mrs. Aisha Buhari. It's good to see you, ma'am, always. Also to say we have in the room the Chief of Staff to the former President, teacher, diplomat, distinguished Democrat, and my teacher, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. When I mentioned the security groups that were here, I failed to mention the DSS. Malambichi is represented today by Mr. Peter Afunaya, director at the DSS. We thank you all for coming. It is at this point that I would like to invite my brother, presidential spokesperson to the former president, he was Special Assistant, Senior Special Assistant, Media and Publicity to the President, um, the former President Muhammad Buhari, and was reappointed after the President was sworn in for another term of four years. He is currently a columnist, and so we share a lot in common. Help me welcome my brother, Garba Shehu. Thank you, Eugenia. Your Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, President Commander-in-Chief. With your kind permission, I stand on existing protocol. In the 1930s, up to the 1950s, the colonial administration in northern Nigeria embarked on a major program to teach the people of the region how to read and write. And it was enormously successful. After a while, they evaluated the success and they realized one thing. They had taught people how to write, how to read. But there were no books to read. The chief education officer of northern Nigeria at that time, Dr. Rupert East, said, we have taught the people how to ride horses, but we have given them no horses. And from that point then, they set up the Northern Literature Bureau, which began to generate literature, books for people to read. And that's when you had the emergence of some of the well-known First generation Northern authors, Abu Bakar Imam, Aminu Kano, Saadu Zungur, and, and so forth. The important event of today has a tie-in with that sort of incident. Barely a year after he has left office, some people still ask the question, including men and women in our own political party, the APC, what did Buhari do with his eight years? So, Femi, and I'm sure many more will come after, said, let's not get angry with them. Let us give them what to read. This is the significance of today's event. So, Femi, and this other group, uh, Dr. Yakubu, 
have done a good thing by writing books on President Muhammad Buhari and what he did. What is going to be better is that we buy these books and make sure that they are read all over the country, all over the world. It is my privilege at this time to invite the book reviewer, CNN journalist of the year, Emeritus. He's been CNN journalist all these years, Shola Oshinkeye. Please come and review the book. Mr. President, uh, please permit me to stand on the already established protocol. But I must confess that after listening to my father, General I.B.A. Maruna, I became relieved. Why? Because for the past few days, my heart has been pumping boom, boom, boom. When I saw the, the um, program from the villa, allocating five minutes to review a 488 page book. So what I did, I edited as General IBM, um, IBM Aruna was reading. Now I present what I have left. <laughs> Mr. President, the author, Chief Femi Adeshino, who has been my friend for 34 years, minces no word about the nature of the book he is about to gift the world. Not a book about government policies, micro or macro economics, or those bitter concussions that the Bretton Woods uh, institutions force down the throats of third world countries. The 488 page book is the authentic Buhari story told from the perspective of a man who has spent eight solid years serving him. In Femi's words, working with Buhari, reflections of a special advisor, media and publicity, in quote, is about the Buhari, is about the Buhari software, not the hardware, end of quote. Written in a lucid prose with precision and focus, Additional in 30 solid chapters provides a thrilling insight not only into his own struggles and vindications, frustrations and fulfillments, but also this, the human side of President Buhari that the world has never known. In the early chapters, the author traces the, his love story with President Buhari to December 31st, 1983, when, he, when the president came into uh, the Nigerian uh, political space, he also traces and recalls the state of flux he fell into when his appointment was announced on May 31, 2015, and his baptism of fire that came quickly, so quickly in the very first week of his assumption of office. That baptism started with the parliamentary coup, in quote, of June 9, 2015, that produced Dr. Bukola Saraki as Senate President and Honorable Yakubu Dugara as Speaker House of Representatives. This chaplain uh, contrasted the party's choice of Dr. Ahmed Lawan and Right Honorable Femi Bajami Amila. The writer recalls how Buhari returned from Germany in the, in the wee years of the same day, June 9, only to be confronted with the crisis. The party hierarchy was mad. The president was angry and sad, very sad. And Femi Additional Force was in a quandary. 
later I summoned courage and went to the president and told the president that he wanted him to issue a statement on the scenario that had just unfolded, but which contradicted the party's position. In court, a constitutional process had been concluded, he wrote, and it would work with the elected leadership. That was when the author noticed how long the president index finger, how long it was. <laughs> president Buhari just lifted up his gaze, looked him straight in the face, and said, I won't say anything. Femi sank further, but he quickly recovered and became adamant. He reminded the president, Mr. President, the day I resumed, you told me that don't be afraid to tell me the truth. That you know, in the position I am, people will shield me from the truth. He also admitted that I'm a general. And generals don't broach argument. But they promised Femi that if needs be, he will allow him to argue. Argue with me. Femi said that to the president, and the president had no choice but to fish out his pen and edited uh, Femi's prepared uh, speech slightly, adding somewhat that the constitutional process had been somewhat concluded. Then, and something after the process, in quote, then he approved and firmly released. The rest is history. Over the next eight years, Femi will confront other tests like that, coming from different directions, from the opposition, from the traditional media, the social media, netizens, as they are called, who are the, who are the loudest when it comes to offering opinions. Uh, the, even the church, Femi is a pastor. The church didn't spare him. When the prophets sought to see the president, and it was a no, the prophet would go to the rooftops and foresee that something is going to happen, that we should pray for the presidential fleet. Of course. The, the president made many trips, and thank God nothing happened, apart from the usual turbulence and all that and all that. However, like I said, Femi faced more tests, but the most virulent were the brouhaha over the president's certificate. The former head of crisis, Namdi Kano, insurgency, his head crisis, and the jubilee of Sudan saga. <laughs> the author captured all in chapter 9. Like I said, <laughs> like I said, I've edited the papers. So I'm going to jump. I'll skip the media. And go to another very interesting aspect. And that is the characterization of General Buhari, of President Buhari, excuse me, first as a bigot, as a mean, taciturn, non-smiling, totally indifferent to pain and pleasure, as if he was not a human being with blood flowing in his veins. Later, Buhari's traducers would add other words like bigotry, an ethnic irredentism to the lexicon, and so on. However, Femi ascribed the pernicious profiling of the president to people scared of retribution for their corrupt tendencies. Still, the opposition employed that to the market candidate Buhari as he was then in 2003, 2007, and 2011, and the president lost. However, 
by the time, uh, however, by 2015, uh, I don't know whether the president, like uh, President Tinobu, sang a miloko. <laughs> however, those who believe they mobilized with Femi, part of the Buari crowd, writing week after week and all that, and by God's grace, the labors didn't matter anymore, and President Buhari won an overwhelming victory. <laughs> Buhari a bigot, the auto asked. He also, in another breath, he rejects that profiling in his entirety. Not that Buhari, he says, it's not the Buhari that has Christian cooks and Christian drivers. Not the Buhari that will attend a predominantly Christian event, fly all the way from, from I think, Katsina or Kaduna to Lagos to attend a, a, a Christian event and sat all through. I'm referring to the uh, commendation service that Femi Additional had for his mom in August of 2013 uh, when uh, she passed at the age of 75. God, God bless her soul and may her memory continue to be a blessing. Femi captured that in, um, chapter, in, in chapter 2 and he writes about the uh, principle that a man who never forgives a good turn, a man loyal all the way, an embodiment of loyalty. The author disagrees with the, nepo, with the nepotism tag on Buhari as regards alleged lopsidedness in appointments during his uh, tenure. The allegation Femi argues in the book is a product of malice by the opposition who sought to injure and um, injure the president politically. I jump to another contentious issue. Like I said, General Aruna has taken the, the wind off my sail, but I will still manage. Now, the, posi the, the poster is between, General, between President Buhari and former President Olusegun or Basanjo, who made the most uh, foreign trips. President Obasanjo confessed at Oxford in January of 2018 that he made a paltry 97 trips in the entire eight years he spent in office, essentially to convince the world that Nigeria was now free of the military and the country had now become a good investment destination. But records you know, internet doesn't lie and it doesn't forgive. It doesn't forget, it doesn't forgive. Records, as, we, as some research, researchers now brought out, show that Baba Yabo made over 103 foreign trips within the first 168 days of his first term. And now about President Buhari. The author provides the answer in chapter 21, where he listed the international trips made by his principal, naming the country, the exact location, period, and purpose. Between June, already, he said that between June 3, uh, 2015, when he made his first trip, and May 6, two, 2023, when he made his last, President Buhari Cho excuse me, chalked 95 trips. You can do the mass and make your deductions as uh, to so who the winner is. <laughs> President Buhari, very early in uh, his administration, sagged, okay, this is talking about the humanity, the human side of President Buhari. Very early, 2015, he removed uh, Mr. Ita Epeyo, a South Southerner, as the Director General of the Department of State Services, DSS, 
I replaced them with Lawa Musa Daura from Kasina State. Another test for, for Femi. Fearing a backlash, Femi, in page, 96, in page 166, said he laid bare his fear before his principal. I had asked him, Femi writes, and I, in quote, Mr. President, you are removing Ita, I mean Ita Ekweyong from the South South. Why not replace him with someone from that region for balance? The President answered, before people are recommended to me, a search must have been made by an appropriate set of people or committee, and one or two or three people are brought forward in order of performance and competence. Now, if someone comes first, and I bypass him because he is from my home state, or on the basis of ethnicity or religion, he said categorically, Allah will never forgive me. He said, Allah will judge me, to quote the author directly. <laughs> but the president continued. He assured me, anyway, don't worry. The appointment will balance out. The jury is out whether the appointments actually balanced out. I leave that. Um, in, um, okay. Okay, I, I, let me conclude. Let me conclude because, like I said, there are other. I will conclude. Um, save for a few typos and one or two pages with faint print, and despite the fact that Femi is generously sympathetic to his boss, the book published by Savari Books Limited is a treasure trove for those who earnestly seek to understand the Muhammadu Buhari enigma. I have known Femi for 35, 34 years, like I said. He has a clean heart, and his writing is very clean. He's honest and brutally frank. Therefore, you will see all, this book, all these attributes in the book, and I recommend this book to everybody in this room, and outside to researchers, journalists, teachers, students of history, and those who test for knowledge. I was spellbound when I read the book, and I'm sure when you get your copy, you will feel the same. So, don't leave this all without getting a copy for yourself. And like my sister Eugenia said, buy copies for your family, for your friends, for your library, and neighbors. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my job is done. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Shola. He was in the trenches during June 12 struggle. <laughs> now he's operating on the surface. <laughs> Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Time now for unveiling and presentation of the book titled Working with Buhari.
thank you for the short drama. Your Excellency, Mr. President, the distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my high honor to, at this time, invite Mr. President, His Excellency, Ashiwaju Bola Ametinibu, and the former President, His Excellency, Muhammad Buhari, to unveil the book, Working with Buhari. Your Excellencies. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the new book, Working with Buhari by Femi Adishina. Your Excellencies. Thank you, Your Excellencies. Thank you, Mrs. Buhari, for the support. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. We have come to that point where after that first book, we are now going into the review of the second book, which is Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, Volume 1 to 5. Reviewing a book like has been expressed by Shola Oshunke, is not an easy feat. Last year, I was privileged to review a book as a book reviewer of the former governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasser Erufai. And it was quite a journey. Malam Erufai is here. Wave, please, so that we can see you. <laughs> there he is. Good to see you. And so I'm going to call on two very distinguished Nigerian personalities and academics. And both of them will take turns to review this five-volume book. His Excellency has been described in many ways, the former president. But if you don't know him well, then you don't know that he is a man who has a good sense of humor. In uh, the books that you will be reading, you will find that sense of humor in it. It is often felt that when a man ascends to the position of the presidency, then he stops laughing. That is not true. And so I will invite at this point Professor Egosa Osaye, distinguished academic, to come forward and do the review, number one. And then after him, we'll have Professor Kabiru Umato, distinguished public analyst and academic, who will do the second tranche of review of the same set of books. Let me first of all invite to the podium Professor Erosa Osare. Please encourage him as he comes, it's a long walk. Your Excellency, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, President Buhari, and permit me then to stand on the established protocol. I 
have a daunting task ahead of me in the next five minutes. I've been asked to review volumes one, three, and five of a five-volume book, which must be an adverse task indeed, especially when you consider that volume one has 15 chapters and two appendices, volume three has 22 chapters, and volume five has 29 chapters, including four insider testimonies, one by former minister, and three by the chief executives of very critical federal agencies under the Buhari presidency. But my task is probably made a lot easier by the fact that we have several continuities and complementarities and integration across the several chapters in these three volumes. Now, although this is quite useful, because the editor makes very clear that there is no clear-cut theoretical or conceptual framework that will tie all of these contributions together. There is a lot that can be said for the continuities. And yet, these continuities are also responsible for the repetitious overlaps that you'll find across many of the contributions. Well, while those repetitions and overlaps help to reinforce what we should study in these volumes, I think that it tells something about the central thread that ties all of them together, the man Muhammadu Buhari. Now, uh, take this very seriously. All of the contributors come from different perspectives and employ different data, yet they are all able to arrive at the same conclusions. Uh, this must be something that is truly remarkable. Now, and I find that this convergence, or if you like, the coherence that then flows through the book it's all about the consistency, the stability, and the predictability of the man Buhari himself. And that is the one common theme that you find tying all of the contributions together. Now, this is all about what the different contributors call the Buhari reputation, or in fact, the mystique of Buhari, because Buhari comes across as Baba Gaskia. He comes across as, one author puts it, a man of irrevocable incorruptibility, meaning that this is an outstanding and extraordinary leader known for his very virtuous strengths in the areas of discipline and leadership and predictability. Now, this is the great building envelope that ties together effective leadership, as all of the authors demonstrate. But it does a lot more than that. It confers integrity, some morality, and some high moral ground for service. I will conclude later on that note. But let me just say that Buhari himself has almost as a matter of calculated strategy given tact and traction to this mystique of who he is by adopting what he himself in his inaugural speech told all of us that he's for everyone and he's not for anyone. Now, all of the contributors refer to his principled non-interference, part of which we just heard from the last reviewer. The fact that he says, well, the constitutional cause has had its effect, and there's nothing I can do about that. That is quintessential non-interference. Now, this mystique 
also became something that rekindled the Nigerian mystique for all the world to celebrate. And therefore, Buhari conferred on Nigeria in the eight years a great deal of credibility, a great deal of integrity, and in global acknowledgement of that personality, he became the acknowledged African champion of the anti-corruption crusade. Now, if all of these things suggest to you that these five volumes, but especially the three volumes that I'm reviewing, are a biography, you need to search elsewhere. These three volumes, and I'm sure the other two volumes, which will soon be reviewed, tell us about how Buhari addressed serious national issues, how he arrived at the priorities that drove his government, and most of all, how he laid the foundation for searching for solutions and remedying the historical accidents that have made our country a little dysfunctional and how to place the country back on a solid ship. That is the nature of the legacy that you'll find in these three volumes. Now, let me just say that the three volumes that I am reviewing are very closely related and they are mutually reinforcing. In volume one, which is journey to the presidency, you would find something about the Buhari mystique. And this is the one that smoothened his transition from one of military authoritarian leadership to democratic civilian leadership. And that is the doggedness and the resilience that saw him through the battle to get back to the presidency three failed attempts and one final success in 2015. And then, as we say in Nigeria, he had, as a matter of saying you have done well, got another term of four years, making eight on the whole. So volume one should be read as a foundation, providing a conceptual, very strong conceptual background about man Buhari himself, to which many of the contributions are devoted. His move from being a military general and the Buhari Diagbo mystique to the point where he became president. And I think all of those things are done against the backdrop of the fact, which many people forget, that by 2015, we were at a strong inflection point in our nation, national history that looked like the South Africans were in the days when apartheid was going to collapse. And the swan song was, adapt or die. But they chose to adapt. Now, in Buhari's coming, we found something that justified the change slogan and made it even historically necessary. That is volume one. In volume two, volume three, I beg your pardon, we find 22 chapters. In all of these chapters, we are dealing with issues of security and human development. And you would find that the authors are very clear in their minds what today we call the kinetic and non-kinetic approaches had to be balanced under the Buhari presidency. And how did they balance this? He dealt with issues that suggested that the most sustainable way to address issues of insecurity would be to address the underbellies of social stability, social cohesion, and human empowerment. And therefore, in those very, very interesting chapters, you'll find things about youth empowerment, you'll find things about women's empowerment, you'll find issues of you know, the um, army, the air force, and the navy, and how those things balanced out. But most critically, we are reminded that Buhari had a very calculated deployment of the strictures of the theory of concentric circles, um, Professor Gambari is here, he's the great exponent of um, concentric circles. Now, but in doing things that would make for sustainable partnerships, enduring partnerships to address those issues of insecurity and underdevelopment. 
and he put human beings at the center of it all. In volume five, there is focus on strategic leadership, on governance, and on development. And this is the largest of all the volumes, 29 chapters on the whole. But what those chapters do is to tell us how Buhari sought to reset the national agenda. And it's critical because there are two very momentous formations. Um, one is that in the second tenure, he tried to up the ante of the reforms that had gone on with a view to ensuring that those things became enduringly consolidated. And that's what we find. Now, if you look at the chapters that address the corrective agenda that came with that, especially as manifested in the final bills that were made into law in the last month of his presidency, you will find that attempts were made to correct the imbalances and injustices that had characterized our country's existence. One of these, of course, long before then, was the Petroleum Industry Act, um, which everyone agrees was a critical and very monumental intervention in our country's trajectory. Now, all of the reforms about the correctional services, the police, the judiciary, all of those things you would find analyzed properly in Volume 5. But Volume 5 does one critical thing. It shows us how circumstances finally forced President Buhari from a policy of non-interference and positive neutrality to a policy of active engagement in party politics, in executive legislative relations, because this had to do with survival and control. Now, therefore, this was a rational adaptation to the exigencies and very serious demands of the presidency. But in all of that, he retained the integrity because with all the temptations to deploy the proverbial federal might in off-cycle elections, President Buhari resisted the temptation to change his policy of non-interference. So you would find all of those things recorded in that volume. But let me close on the note of the significance of the three volumes that I have reviewed. The editor sets out in the first volume to argue that this would be, it is, he says, the most authoritative account, the historical account of the Buhari presidency in eight years. And I think that that's not an easy claim to make, but it is backed by the strength of the very well-researched chapters that you would find in these three volumes. There is something else that I should say. When people do this kind of analysis, what you find is a cataloging of all of the policies and interventions, just simply stating what rules, what regulations, what bills, what laws were then passed, without telling us whether these things worked or not. There's a lot of cataloging in the volumes, but the authors at least have gone ahead to see the question of whether they were effective and whether they have enduring potentials. And that is what I think distinguishes this book. Because you will find references, for instance, to the Global Terrorism Index that shows that the countermeasures for insecurity, especially the ones against Boko Haram insurgency and the fight against banditry, were effective because they can show that there was a drastic reduction in the human lives that were lost as a result of those interventions. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I see that in these three volumes, you find a scientific basis for validating conclusions. Because if there is no basis for those empirical validations, we cannot hold those things to be true. We can only say they are part of the Buhari mystique. But the nature of the legacies that I see 
and that I have pointed out will suggest to us something that I had done several years ago. Mr. President, sir, you will recall that you authored the book Drawing Water from an Empty Well. And I had the privilege to be reviewer on that occasion. In my conclusion in that review, I said to you, sir, that leadership makes the difference. President Buhari drew water from an empty well, and the legacies are there for the country to follow through. I thank you, distinguished president, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. You know, you had closely related and mutually reinforced the Buhari mystique and our good professor spoke extempore. He had lived most of what he was going to say. He has the gift of the garb and he had a seamless review, albeit in five or six minutes, which he delivered. Professor Egosa Osage is the Director General of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs and did justice to those three volumes which he was given to review. When I grow up, I want to be a professor. <laughs> Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the man I'm about to call up is a man you have seen several times on television, an excellent resource person, public analyst, who went on to serve his state in Kaduna State as a commissioner, and continues to provide a way in on Nigeria and the future of Nigeria. Help me welcome another professor, Professor Kabiru Matu. Your Excellency, the President, Your Excellency, the former President, I mean also to join the queue of standing on the existing protocol. Your Excellency, Mr. President, it's so difficult for a student of political science to be asked to review and summarize two books of about 50 chapters and almost a thousand pages in two pages and to be delivered in just five minutes. I accept the challenge, however, but I will not behave as a professor of political science. I would rather choose to be an ordinary book reviewer by bringing about a lot of the issues that I have found as very useful and important in the two volumes that I have reviewed. Your Excellency, this book, edited by Dr. Akubu, with several chapters contributed by young and aspiring academics mostly, stating from their own perspectives what their views on a lot of the issues and a lot of the programs that were executed by the government of President Muhammad Buhari. I am therefore reviewing volumes two and volume four. Volume two is on the management of the economy. And it explores the management of the economy in the two terms of the president. It is in 33 chapters and attempts in all to capture government policies mainly on the economic management but not limited to fiscal and monetary issues dissecting the nature and character of the Nigerian economy at the crossroads due to poor management of the oil wealth, insecurity and corruption at the highest level of government. Now, the articles in this volume, Your Excellencies, spoke to the experience and 
committed leadership disposition of the former president in handling these national liabilities and the turnaround in both tangible in and intangible spaces. Passing through recession twice, a global pandemic, another crisis occasioned by the global political economy among which was the war in Ukraine were apparently surmounted by the focused and disciplined leadership style of the administration. The volume is compressed. In my view, a compressed study of the administration's strategies of addressing the huge economic challenges and the management of our national resources. Contributions on monetary policies, economic growth and sustainability plans, funding strategies for national development as well as programs for agricultural and industrial development of the country were very elaborate. Revenue mobilization, generation, and management of foreign reserves in relation to public debt management and national plans and development experiences of that administration. The entire gamut of the national economy from agriculture to industry, pension administration, oil and gas, mining, steel development, and the controversial farmers' hurdles clashes across the country as well as the Naira redesigned debacle were thoroughly analyzed by the contributors. In my view, the volume was concluded with a piece on restructuring of the steel development sector in Nigeria. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Volume 2 speaks about industry and infrastructure. Now, in the forward to that volume, and given the fact that I have very little time to do the summary, I chose to go through the experience of an editor and a distinguished statesman, Mala Mamandora, to read through the forward and understand the genesis the content and context of that particular volume, and therefore, Mala Maman submits that President Buhari's achievement in the area of industry and infrastructure showcases to the world that Africa has leaders that have the capacity to transform the nation and the continent. The volume, therefore, analyzes development and infrastructure in industry, in water resources, for the purposes of laying solid foundation for national economic development. Now, this was corroborated by the fact that between 2015 and 2016, the manufacturing sector grew by 11% through foreign direct investment and attention given to small businesses through deliberate policies and interventions. The contributors here presented scenarios on enhancing the nation's growth and sustainability, substantially minimizing the overdependence on oil as the main stay of the Nigerian economy. This was exemplified by the administration's, administration's huge investment in railways, roads, and other networks with the aim of improving access to market and easier movement of people and goods across the country. The administration's commitment to the development of industry and infrastructure therefore led to the growth in the gross domestic product and initiation of several programs such as the Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria as well as massive investment in power generation to address the acute shortage and boost industry by significantly investing in public infrastructure. The volume demonstrated fair understanding of the industrial policies and interventions through various presidential initiatives, concessions in critical infrastructure and transformation recorded, for example, in both the tin can and apapa ports, the growth of critical ports value chains, and the deep blue marine security projects were analyzed as some breakthroughs of the administration. Nigeria's telecommunication industry in the role of government.
this book was concluded with contributions on water resource management and power sector reforms, outlining the successes and challenges that were encountered. In conclusion, Mr. President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is important to conclude by asserting that the authors of the various articles in the two volumes have by and large successfully represented their views on the leadership of President Muhammadu Buhari carefully choreographed into books that have chronicled the regime elected as a mark of Nigeria's transition into free and fair electoral contest as a central requirement of Western liberal democracy in 2015. It is a fact that history is best recorded when events are put into writing. That is the role and the relevance that these books will play now and in the future. Governance is a process, Your Excellency, a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. To alleviate the sufferings of the people, therefore, government will require firm commitment to the reforms already in place. Continuity has been identified as the major problem with governments in Africa. I do hope that the President Tinubu administration will carefully study what has been achieved and what is going on in order to deliver to the earnings of the electorate. These volumes, therefore, are recommended for everyone in school, everyone in the public and private sector, and especially those in politics, government, and administration. Thank you, Your Excellency. Cerebral and engaging professor of political science, University of Abuja, former commissioner of agriculture and forestry, Kaduna State. Professor Kabiru Mato has worked on a professor's forward-looking position for Pressy. If you remember in our secondary schools, we were asked to take a paragraph and reduce it. And so as a professor, he has decided to deploy his skills and become an ordinary reviewer like me, because should he wear his professorial cap, we may then have to go into conceptual issues, dynamic theories, leadership theories, and the empirical studies of the book. Would like to thank Professor Kabiru Matu for doing the honors in that space of five minutes. A round of applause for our reviewer. Yes. May I, at this juncture, present the unveiling of Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, Volume 1 to 5. We await the fanfare.
Absolutely brilliant. I'd like to ask that whatever it is we are seeking for and for purposes of this unveiling, the particular um, item that is required for unveiling comes forward. No. Thank you very much. This way? Right. Okay. Fantastic. May I, at this juncture, respectfully invite His Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Tinubu, to come forward. His Excellency, former President Mohamedou Buhari, His Excellency, General Yakubu Gawan, General IBM Haruna, Her Excellency Mrs. Buhari, Dr. Udu Yakubu, Alhaji Mohammed Indimi, and Dr. Udu Yakubu to please make their way up to the podium. Please have your seat. Can we also bring up um, copies of the book? Somebody standing in the flank, so when it has been unveiled, our distinguished personalities and excellencies will hold up at least one copy of the book. Alhaji Mutala, please come forward, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please make way for Alhaji Mutala to join these groups of top-level excellencies to include His Excellency Mr. President as they unveil this very strategic and exciting book. His Excellency the former Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Thank you very much sir. If you would make your way up. This is the official unveiling of the book and His Excellency the President of the Federal Republic will take the lead to pull through along with the central subject matter and the chair to pull. Please sir. Thank you very much. Congratulations, here are copies of the book for optics. Please hold it up, would appreciate that, Excellencies. <laughs> and what a beautiful set of books they are. Indeed, you must not leave without getting copies of these books. Thank you very much. I would like to ask Dr. Udu Yakubu to fall out and I'd like to invite Chief Femi Adeshino to come forward and also at this time we will be needing copies of that book to quickly get this logistics out of the way so their excellencies will return to their seats. Um, this is the time when we ask the other author of the book to be upstanding. There we go. May we respectfully request that we retrieve these books from you, sir, and madam, and then we'll quickly exchange them for Femi Adesino's book. Thank you very much.
would like to thank your excellencies, distinguished personalities here gathered. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Your Excellencies. It's time for us to retrieve the books as you make your way down. Your Excellency, Mr. President, sir, I will collect them from you. Keep that going until their excellencies return to their seats, Cruise Fusion. Okay. for them, Your Excellencies. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Your Excellency, the central subject matter of the books we're launching today, former President Mohamed Buhari, the chairman and co-chair of this occasion. These are your children, the very talented Nigerians who go across the world and make us so proud. That was most unusual of an unveiling. First, there were two men who came very muscled looking for the books, and then after that, we had that fanfare that was absolutely brilliant. We thank you all for making that possible, and we thank all those led by Mr. President himself who came up to help unveil the book. We're truly appreciative. Three of the professions which I respect very dearly, apart from, of course, presidents of countries all over the world, including ours, are doctors, teachers, and pilots. Because the pilots carry you, and you can't see what they are doing. My uncle, Captain Yusuf Lawal, was president of the, uh, captain of the presidential fleet for many years. And he worked with a gentleman who himself, 
has been in the cockpit and understands the dynamics. And this is the man who has been given the responsibility today, having carried men and women across the world and taken them to safety. We now hand this podium over to him for safety of ensuring that we are able to launch this book today. Please help me welcome a former Honorable Minister of Aviation, moderator of the book launch section, and a man who was in the National Assembly, the very distinguished Senator Hadi Sirika. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyina al amin al mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Your Excellency Mr. President, President and Commander in Chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Aswaji Bola Ahmed Tunubu, GCFR. Protocols have been well established and perhaps for want of time I will adopt them. And also to say thank you very much Eugenia Abu. I thought she was describing another personality, not known to me that she was talking about my humble self. And in this huge gathering of uh, Nigerians. This is Channels Television, and you've been watching the presentation and launch of the book with Buhari, Reflections of a Special uh, Advisor so. on Media and Publicity, written by Mr. Femi Adeshino. We now return to our regular programming. Thank you. So I want to thank everyone who has come, everyone who has contributed, and those who still support the book. Thank you very, very much. I have followed, okay, for me, I always told people that working with the then president, Muhammad Ubari, was a demonstration of the grace of God upon my life. From nowhere, without lifting a finger to push it, I was invited to assume the position of special advisor on media and publicity. It was former Ekiti State Governor, Dr. Kaede Fayemi is in the audience, who told me how it happened. He said after President Buhari emerged, they took three names to him as possible advisor on media and publicity. He looked at the three names, brought his pen from his breast pocket, circled my name, and signed in front of it. That was how it happened. <laughs> I had followed General Buhari, since he was 41 years old and he was military head of state, I loved that regime. Buhari, the Afghan regime, I loved it. And I was not just a young, impressionable person then. I was in year three in the then University of Ife. So I knew what I was following. I loved that regime so much. So much so that when in August 1985 that regime was overthrown, it was like my worst day ever. When you pick a copy of the book, I'll urge you to read the foreword, which was written by President Buhari, and then read the preface, in which I explained what the book was all about and what it is not about. It is about the software and not the hardware of the man Buhari and the government he headed. For me, Buhari is a conviction. Not just our former president or somebody I served. For me, it's a conviction. A lot of people wonder, what has the man given you that you are so loyal to him? If he was not a conviction, I would not have come to work for him. I was MD of a thriving newspaper. I was president of the Nigeria Guild of Editors. And when I was asked to come and work for him, I left everything and came. I know not everybody shares this passion about Buhari, but you know there's a common song now. Let them day their day and make we day our day. <laughs> nobody worry nobody. So we that are Buharis, we know ourselves. Let nobody worry nobody. Anybody that is not a Buharis can continue to do what they are doing. I would like to thank, thank you. I'd like, like to thank members of my planning committee, Garibadin Mohamed, the chairman, Azu Ishekwene, Shola Oshunke, Femi Baba Femi, Funke Gbemode, Bumi Awunaya, Bayo Omobori Owo, and Miriam Mohamed of uh, Mark Tube. And then not forgetting our able secretary, Gida Du Shuaib. You are simply the best. I also want to thank my publishers, Safari Books Limited. 
Thank you very much. We had a seamless working relationship all throughout the production of the book. Finally, let me thank the leadership of my church, the general overseer of the Four Square Gospel Church, Reverend Sam Aboyeji, is represented here by the district overseer of Ikeja District in Lagos and my pastor, Reverend Ayomide Abraham. We also have head of the mission work in Trinidad and Tobago, Reverend Osare Oemokwai. You are all welcome. Everyone here is an illustrious Nigerian. I thank you all. I also want to thank once again the Mayor Gaskia for inviting me to serve him. Without coming to serve, we may not have had working with Buhari. Once again, thank you, thank you. and God bless you all. Thank you, Chief Adeshino, author of Working with Buhari. It's time now to invite, to come to the podium very quickly, the editor of Muhammadu Buhari, the Nigerian Legacy, Dr. Udu Yakubu, to make his comments, after which His Excellency Professor Yemi Ushipajo, former Vice President, come up. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Chairman of the Occasion, I ask to proceed following protocol. What we have of the history of federal and state administrations in our country has been mostly what is given to us by news reporters. In the 21st century, we have suffered the dangerous trend of history being written and promoted by mostly uninformed commentators on social media. Street sentiments, half-truths, fake news, mischief, all go a very long way in shaping popular perceptions and discourses, which become what most people substitute for administration history. Whether people know it or not, what they write about you or your administration, true or false, becomes your story and becomes who people think you are and what posterity will think of you. Except you seize the narrative and tell your story or create some framework for your story to be properly and truthfully told. In huge proportions, after all difficulties and achievements, and after all said and done, we are all stories. You are a story. Every administration is a story. And our stories become history and live after us. Thankfully, we have presented today what is so far the most authoritative story of the PMB administration. I'm thankful to the reviewers uh, for the thorough work that they did. This work, five volumes, Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, is a private initiative which was most tasking in all regards. A bit of the story of how we made the book is told in the preface. We sought from the beginning to work with independent and fair-minded experts and scholars. Contributors were required to be clinical in their approach and to strive to achieve fairness, contextual awareness, and critical balance. We did not set out to praise the administration of President Muhammadu Buhari, 
we dealt with hard facts, empirical facts, empirical truths, and the conclusions are there for people to read. My role as initiator, director, and main editor was to ensure that the work met the standard that I had conceptualized. So I take responsibility for whatever deficits there are. I thank all the contributors who helped to make this work a reality. I thank Ambassador Chijo Kewigwe for his outstanding contribution as editorial co coordinator. I thank all those who supported us in various ways to achieve this publication. You are all properly acknowledged in the preface. Very important for mention is Mala Mamandara. He was relentless in supporting the project from scratch to completion and to this moment. He supported the work on the ground of its independence sharing my perspective of the need for a scholarly, constructively critical, clinical and empirical assessment of the Buhari administration. I had a free hand in driving the editorial process and deciding on content. Malam did not interfere, but was always available to support. Thank you very much, Malam Mamandara. I thank former President Muhammadu Buhari for supporting us in his own typical fashion. I hope that through these volumes, we have been able to fairly document the history of your administration. I thank the former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawan, for chairing this presentation with his ever-dignifying presence. This is not a vote of thanks, but I cannot walk away from here without thanking the chief launcher, the co-chief launcher, and everyone who has supported us here today. Thank you all very much. I must heartily thank President Bola Hamed Tinubu for gracing this occasion with his presidential presence and presenting the volumes. Thank you so much, Mr. President. The work that we have presented today is significantly historicized. It tells the story of the Buhari administration. There is a lot about the president in the work, but it is a lot more about the story of the administration. And very importantly, it is the story of Nigeria from May 2015 to May 2023. It is our story as a people and as a nation for these eight years. It is your story. And I urge everyone to get the set. I mean, these works are so well conceptualized. Well, the reviewers have said so. If you don't have the sets, you don't have the history of Nigeria in the last eight years before 2024. I urge everyone to get the sets, to read this and to appreciate uh, the work that has been done eight years before now. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Udu Yakubu, editor of the five volumes that have been so reviewed. It's time now for me to invite to the podium His Excellency, the former Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, <laughs> Professor Yemi Oshibaju. <laughs> Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, GCFR, Excellency, the immediate past President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Mohamed Buhari, Your Excellency, the former Head of State of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, General Yakubu Gowan, the President of the Senate, I'm the Speaker, the Right Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly, Your Excellencies, Governors Present, Honorable Ministers, Ladies and Gentlemen, 
Let me begin by congratulating my dear brother Femi Adishino for writing this book, Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Special Advisor, Media and Publicity. There have been quite a few books already written about President Buhari, and they cover a lot of detail, a lot of it historical, and of course several about his numerous achievements since he first came into office in 1983. But the reason why this personal account will be interesting for those who read it, and I have had the uh, particular good fortune of having read it before today. The reason why this is particularly interesting is because even after eight years of being president, President Buhari and so many books written, President Buhari still remains an enigma to many Nigerians who want to understand who really is President Buhari, not, not the public persona, but who is he as a person. And I think Femi Adishino has done a great job, especially in covering an aspect of the former president that is not well known, which is his sense of humor, his ability to tell a good joke and to take a good joke, his ability to laugh at himself. I have a long repertoire of Buhari jokes and Femi has helped me to add a few more, and one day soon, we will launch a book, this time not working with Buhari, but laughing with Buhari. <laughs> but permit me, to share, permit me to share a few anecdotes. Femi Adeshino writes that on the day that the then president, President Buhari, was, this was his first day in office at the villa, he requested him to meet with journalists accredited to the villa in the State House Press Gallery. And the president came in, he shook hands with them, with all the journalists, and as they introduced themselves, he had something to say to each of them. Then when Juliana Taiwo Obaloye introduced herself as representing the Sun newspapers, the president said, warn your cartoonist, warn your cartoonist, my chin is not as long as he usually makes it. <laughs> sometime, sometime in 2019, I complained to him very bitterly about a libellous comment that was made against me and that I wanted to give him notice that I would be suing those who had libeled me. And he said to me in his usual style, Professor, Professor, don't let these people bother you. Do you know what they did to me recently? They actually printed an invitation card that I was going to get married. <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a Friday, on a Friday at the National Mosque. He said, and you won't believe Nigerians. There were thousands of them waiting for me at the national, <laughs> waiting for me to come and get married. <laughs> and, and to tell you that President Buhari was always ready to laugh at himself. Of course, we've heard already from uh, General IBM Haruna retired of how, you know, when he was being criticized about uh, his journeys and all that. But the second part of that story is that Femi also additional tells the story of how following his overseas trips, which were criticized you know, uh, by the press, in an opinion piece in the newspaper criticizing his travels abroad, the headline was, when will President Buhari visit Nigeria? <laughs> and the president laughed and laughed. <laughs> I remember sometime in 2016, just before he went on his medical vacation, I told him I wanted to visit the oil-producing communities in the Delta, and that I thought dialogue with the militants in the wake of the destruction of pipelines and other assets was a good idea. And he told me the experiences of uh, the then Minister of Youth and Sports, Dalong, who had visited the Delta some time back. But while agreeing with me that it was a good idea, and just as I was getting up to leave, he said with that mischievous glint in his eye, Professor, don't be the first vice president to be kidnapped. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> the 
there's a there's a story there's a story that the president likes to tell and it is about the German sentry and Femi Additional recounts that story in, in the book and President Buhari told that story again when the peace committee headed by General Abdul Salam Abubakar visited him and also in that team were the Sultan of Sokoto uh, and, of, and uh, Bishop Hazan Kuka. They had come to appeal to him and that the anti-corruption war should be waged within the ambit of the rule of law. The president listened patiently and then responded, in the military there used to be a joke about the German sentry. And he then explained that when a sentry is on duty at night, an ordinary sentry, and he hears any movement in the dark, he would back out. Who goes there? Advanced to be recognized with his gun ready. He will then interrogate the person, and if he tells an acceptable story, he waves the person on. But the German sentry is different. When he hears a movement in the dark, he immediately lets out a volley of shots, and then he shouts, who went there? <laughs> Of course, <laughs> of course there will be absolute silence because he's already killed the person. <laughs> the president then explained, the president explained to his audience that when he came as a military ruler, he was like the German sentry. I packed all the people who were suspected of corruption and kept them in protective custody. And I told them that they were corrupt until they could prove themselves innocent. But now, under a democratic setting, I see corrupt people going around in Rolls Royce cars, but they remain innocent until I can prove them guilty. <laughs> Femi Additional writes that on one occasion, President Buhari sent him to represent him at a book launch. And when he asked him, so how much should I donate on your behalf? President Buhari said, give them a big smile. <laughs> and tell them that that is what I sent. <laughs> I hope on behalf of the authors today that those of you here will come with more than a big smile. Congratulations again, my brother Femi Adishino, and congratulations to President Buhari for yet another literary celebration of your intriguing and significant life and times. Thank you all very much. Well, it was not unexpected. The former Vice President, His Excellency Professor Yemil Shibajo, would tell his stories with the greatest level of English behind him and then reduce everybody to tears and laughter. He has the gift of the garb and worked assiduously very well with the former president. You can tell when you see the pictures as documented by Omo Buriowo, the presidential photographer, that the president and his vice president were very good together. Those pictures tell uh, another story. We thank you, Your Excellency, uh, for that intervention. I'd like to say very quickly that it's not all the time that you get in the room the purveyors of information and culture from different generations. Immediate past Honorable Minister of Culture, al Lai Mohammed. Current Honorable Minister of Information and National Orientation, al Haji Mohammed Idris Malagi. And General IBM Haruna, Federal Commissioner of Information and Culture. Let's give all three of them a round of applause. <laughs> Information is critical to get a nation going, and they did their bit at their time. Permit me at this time to invite our central subject matter for all the books today. It is my pleasure to invite to the podium to address us all the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Muhammadu Buhari, 
who will deliver his address at this time. Your Excellency, sir. Standing, please sit down. <laughs> Your Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and uh, I stand by already established protocol. It gives me great pleasure to be in Abuja, seat of the federal government, in my first official outing since handing over power on May 29th, 2023. I am delighted to be in our federal capital territory, a place that served as home to me between 2015 to 2023, when fate thrust it off in me to be present of our beloved country. Let me thank the President Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunibu for finding time to attend this launch. Our relationship has always been correct and cordial. Let me also take this opportunity to thank all those who took trouble, sometimes undertaking adverse journeys to visit me in Dora. I thank you all. The two publications launched today, Working with Buhari, Reflections of a Official Advisor on Media and Publicity 2015 to 2023, written by Femi Adishina, who served as my media advisor for eight years, and a volume of five books, Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, 2015-2023, edited by Dr. Udu Yakubu, are worthy to temporarily bring me out of racing in my native Dora back to the city. <laughs> These books presented today once again exemplify the sanctity of records and the role they play in documenting facts and figures, achievements and milestones either in our personal lives or in the life of the nation. I told Adeshina when he visited me in Dora with an advanced copy of, this book, of his book, he has done the nation a favor in writing it as he has provided a one-stop shop on our stewardship to the country. The same has also been done by Dr. Udu Yakubu and his colleagues. Without documentation, revisionism wins. Human beings often have short memories, and unless events are recorded in cold print, some people would come and attempt to either dis distort or even obliterate recent history. But the fact in our favor is that nothing was done under the veil of secrecy. We were as transparent and accountable as possible, being aware of the fact that posterity was the ultimate judge We kept records of our stewardship, knowing that we would always be required to account for the trust entrusted to us. This event today is part of the accounting for our two terms in office, and I thank those who have labored 
day and night to ensure that this history is recorded for now and the future. Government is a continuum. It is like a relay race. You run your course and hand over the button to the next person. This we have done, and the present Bola Ahmed Tribu administration has my support and confidence in the quest for us in the quest for us to have a country of our dreams where there is emancipation for our team and population. With the cumulative achievements of government after government, I believe we will get there in no distant future. In our journey to the desired destination, there will be hard decisions taken and the people would bear some costs. We can only seek their understanding and state that there was no intention to deliberately inflict pain and anguish on anyone. This is why I apologize to such people at the end of our time in office. Sacrifices are still being made now and will continue to be part of our national life and development. Governments will continually seek the understanding and support of the people they lead for our ultimate good and goal. Let, let revisionists not rejoice that they have the ultimate say in the bid to distort history. Facts and records will ultimately prove them wrong. Once some people engage in deliberate falsehood and distortion of facts that pertain to our tenure in office, I take solace in the fact that the records are there and will remain inviolable. My special thanks goes to the chairman of the occasion, General Yakub Gawan, GCFR, for always being there for us. The general, sir, I am most appreciative. <clears throat> special thanks also goes to the co-chairman of the occasion, General IBM Haruna OFR for his unflinching support and encouragement. My appreciation also goes to the book launcher, al Haji Muhammad Indimi OFR for his continuous support. I am truly honored and overwhelmed by those of you that have created time to be with us here today and I cannot thank you enough. I remain committed to our great party, the All Progressive Congress. <laughs> and the leadership of Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu. <laughs> I have a pride in faith in the strength, unity, and future of Nigeria. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I thank you for listening. Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, there will be a symbolic signing of um, the book um, Muhammad Buhari, The Nigerian Legacy, which Mr. President um, will receive copies of. Um, and I would like to urge His Excellency, the former president, to sign those books. Dr. Udu Yakubu, if you bring the book forward, there's a table here for him to sign. While that is going on, I would like at this moment to invite 
Engineer Mansur Ahmed of the Dangote Group to come forward and give the vote of thanks. Engineer Mansour Ahmed is making his way. He was former president of the Manufacturing Association of Nigeria, a forward-looking engineer and a very distinguished Nigerian personality. Your Excellency, President Ahmed Bolatinibu, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Your Excellency, President Muhammad Buhari, our former President, Your Excellency, the Chairman of this occasion, the former Head of State, General Yakubu Gawan. I, I believe that um, what is left of the both of stanks will be minimal because I believe both the um, writers of the book, of the book, sorry, uh, and indeed um, President Muhammad Buhari himself have adequately thanked many of the key uh, promoters of this event. But I think it is important to still reiterate a few uh, uh, appreciations. First, of course, we must reiterate our appreciation of our president, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, for gracing this occasion. We are aware that you are not only doing us an honor by participating in this event, but also extending order to the principal parties, both the uh, former President Muhammad Buhari and indeed uh, the writer of the first book, Adishina. Yeah, Mr. President, we thank you not only for accepting to participate in this, but we do recognize that in your competent, tested, and tried hands, the ship of Nigerian state um, is guaranteed to move forward steadily. Yes, we may be in some turbulence, but with your tested and tried background, we, have, we are confident that in a little while, the ships of state will be sailing in calm waters. Let me also, I think, thank on all our behalf, our chairman of this occasion, General Yakubu Gawan, our former head of state, and indeed, person that has been described as the father of Nigerian unity. Your Excellency, I believe you have provided a sort of the light and direction for our industry, for our country over the past maybe 60, 70 years. We thank you and we thank you for your continued direction and continued support. Now, the man of the occasion. President Muhammad Buhari, for allowing these books to be published, because I think without your support, without commitment, both Adishina and Dr. Udu would have found it very difficult to do the work they did. And along with you, we also wish to thank the former Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbanjo, because I think those of us who uh, do remember your team was a tag team, and you have worked very uh, uh, closely together. Perhaps one of the things that I believe needs to be kept on record is that your regime was the first to set the standard for the work between the president and vice president. Yours was the first regime that was able at one point to transfer power from the president to the vice president smoothly, voluntarily, without the need, without resort to any, um, any uh, um, to any 
principle that would have to be used now. Finally, I believe that we also need to recognize and thank our traditional rulers, who many of whom have been here since early in the morning, and these our traditional rulers have provided the um, background to our nation's continued growth as a united nation. I think their presence lends calmness and ensures that our unity in diversity is sustained. I also obviously must reiterate our appreciation to the chief luncher and other co-lunchers who have so generously uh, provided opportunities for these, two, for these two publications to be distributed as widely as possible because I believe these are important publications that needs to be not only distributed to our um, academics, our historians, our politicians, but also our school children, so that they begin to understand the complexities of nation building that this last uh, regime uh, has indeed highlighted. And I believe that this would be followed by many others. So finally, I must also thank the um, publishers of this book, they have been mentioned, and particularly the reviewers. They have been able, in a few minutes, to summarize and highlight the key content of these volumes, particularly the five volumes. I believe many of us would have taken probably a year or two to be able to go through. But these professors have done a wonderful job, uh, almost uncharacteristic of professorial presentations. They have summarized in very, very short period the work of these extensive volumes. It is our hope that all the people here in this room and also outside this room will recognize the importance of what has been presented and seek to procure a copy and be able to understand the complexities of nation building, the complexities of leadership, and the complexities of governance. I want to thank those who have also helped make this, to make this event feasible. I think particularly the key MC, Eugenia Abu, she has done a wonderful job, you know, uh, driving through the process, and of course the, um, uh, the other uh, MCs who have helped. So I thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Engineer Mansour Ahmed, who has just delivered the vote of thanks. Your Excellency, Mr. President, Your Excellency, former President, Mr. Chair, I'd like to crave your indulgence um, for th less than 30 seconds to again salute um, His Royal Highness, the Emir of Kanu, Aminu Adobayeru, for his time spent here. The Emir of Kazaure, Alhaji Najib Husseini Adamu, for his time spent here. We thank you, sir. Emir of Nasarawa, His Royal Highness Alhaji Ibrahim Usman Jibril, we thank you for your time here. Oba Kabiru Adewale Shotobi, the Ayaburi of Ikorudu, we thank you so much, Your Royal Majesty, and all other traditional rulers who are here whom I may not have mentioned. We thank you for your patience and your time. It is now my singular honor and privilege to invite to deliver his speech, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Please give him a resounding round of applause as he makes his way. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, my predecessor in office, President Mamadou Wari, you are welcome to Abuja. Since you passed the baton up to me, I have seen many of your jokes. 
and I realize it's not just a walk in the park. Your Excellency, the Chairman of today's occasion, our former head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, the father of a nation, and General Haruna. Well, thank you for those good times at Mobu. Right. The Senate President, Speaker, House of Representatives, all other leaders of our country here present. The fi former Vice President, Yemi Osibaju. Chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum and other governors here present. Please spare me the time to go through the very hurdles list of protocol. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's just a very, very beautiful day. Mrs. Sibari, where is that? New wife, that <laughs> thank you for all you've done for this country. You've been a mother, a leader, and a good wife. Thank you. Let me thank the organizers of today's book launch for providing me the opportunity and the audience to reunite with my predecessor, former President Mahmoudou Buhari, since he left the office, May 29, 2023. After handing over, you said, I'm far away in Daura. But if you need me, contact me. But I won't intrude in whatever you are doing. I won't interfere or bring down, breathe down your throat. With partner, to make democracy flourish in Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, thank you. Except when I call him to say, are you living? Are you being in the farm? You don't hear for him either to nominate or intrude in the cabinet or complain about occasion. Thank you for being who you are, a civic. When you left the office, you left many barrows and a bunch of tax for me for continuity. And I told people, I inherit the asset and liability of my predecessor. No matter what I say, we always joke sometimes, and you say you can never please Nigerians. But yours is to focus, work hard, and satisfy your conscience. You have done that. It is reflected here. You serve our country with dedication and a common seal. I was talking to somebody last night that I'll be at this book launch. Said, oh, 
I remember you so lost. Buari. I said, stop where you are. I'm not talking to you about a disclaimer. I'm talking to you about a program that I really appreciated. And we continue to appreciate. Being here face to face with you is being here with a great documentation of history, candor, integrity, and character. <laughs> the author of the books, they might have done their best, but what Nigeria we gain from the book is what history must do. And that history is in the book. And I'm glad history has been reintroduced and it is part of our curriculum in various schools and it will be emphasized. I promise you. You have some office at a very difficult time in our nation slide. The economy was spiraling into recession. Boko Haram has taken over so many local governments and some part of our country. It is easy to forget that United Nations building was attacked here in Abuja. It's easy to forget the role of armed forces. But if this book is carefully read and taught in terms of substance in our various schools, the job of securing the in every inch of our nation may not be completed, but you did a wonderful job. And we will not rest, I promise you, until every agent of darkness is completely eliminated. It's a sovereign country. I'm glad to listen to you making a commitment to my administration for support and real politician, a democrat in you, that you are still dedicated and committed to our party. The largest party in Africa. Well, I've emulated you. One of those things, non-interference, being a Democrat, responsibility for nation building, staying on course. I am determined to do just that because I campaigned for this job. And you told me in our discussions, it's not easy. But I went out there dancing for it, making promises, doing kokuma, doing all kalangos, making music, so I cannot complain. I will be there. It's in addition to going through the Niger Bridge and many other things we've done, people would not realize the interconnectivity necessary for economic growth in a real project, in our port project. How vital it is to the economic growth of this nation. 
a silent worker, a man who is a very, very organized and disciplined individual. President Muhammad Dubari, thank you for what you've done. To many of you, I thank you for coming to this event. It has been a wonderful, a wonderful time for our nation. Very wonderful indeed. We are facing the roller coaster. Same part of what to do. We remove subsidy. We stop those people fleecing Nigerians. Yes, I know they will complain. They did the same thing all over. A lesson is learned from you. For the make of kindness for a nation development and prosperity is not fermented from you. It's land. How much I share is the editions of this book is by promoting it as a subject matter and the history classrooms of our universities and secondary schools. Then, according to you, a civic subject matter of our nation. I wish you a very successful time and retirement life but not tired life, a prosperous one. I know you won't take a penny from the book launch proceeds, <laughs> but continue to be part of the part of the pillar for our future development. Thank you, Mohamed Wari. National Anthem. Your Excellency, sir. Thank you.